gotta get this motherfucker thing out of the way. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Today is the beginning of legal tampering. And if this doesn't at least get you excited, it lets you know that spring is just around the corner because this is the end to me of the NFL winter. Now there really isn't an off season. I mean, we were only a month away from the Super Bowl. So you have that one month period where teams are jockeying to get their cap house in order, create some cap space, get rid of some players and things like that to be ready to bring in this year's team. And for me, I always say championship teams are built in the off season. You can't win the Super Bowl in the off season, but you can start planting the seed of growth that will get you there. And this, of course, is the season that we've heard the Cowboys kind of, you know, just kind of kind of wet our whistle a little bit there with the idea of being all in. And I don't think the Cowboys are going to be all in. But here's what I will say. What you really don't want people to know is what your real plans are. And this is one of those ones, sometimes it's better to baffle people with bullshit, to think that you don't want to do something, whereas you actually do. The worst thing that, that people could know is that the Cowboys would be ready to just wheel and deal. We want to get everybody because then you know we can get a better deal because they're desperate. And see, the Cowboys are basically letting everybody know we don't have to do anything. We don't have to do Dak Prescott's contract. And, uh, you know, we're okay because we can find other ways of doing what we want to do. You know, free agents, you know, who needs free agents? We've been 12 and 5 the last three years, second most victories without getting any free agents. So why would we change those things? And then just when you lull yourself to sleep, bam, they go out and they sign somebody. That could happen. Maybe it's not likely, but it could happen. And here we are um, today, free agent frenzy, 12 o'clock Eastern is the time that teams can start talking to players. Now, what doesn't make sense to me is then, how is it that Russell Wilson went for a visit this weekend to New York and with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, in which case last night the Steelers signed him? Here's what's kind of crazy is the fact that Denver – decided we're better off paying $38 million the next two seasons to basically say, get out of here. Get out of here. We'd rather go ahead and pay that money for you to leave than to stay. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're only paying a million and a half to bring them in here. That's You talk about low risk, high reward. If they get anything, they'll be better off than what they were. So that's one of the shoes to drop, one less place that uh, uh, the Steelers can trade with to try and move on from their guy. And we'll see as this great shuffle goes through. Also, late last night, one of the key pieces to the 49ers' defensive success, Eric Armstead, who is second currently in the NFL with playoff sacks, who is in the last year of his deal that pays him $19 million, have decided to move on from him because they could not work out a deal, restructure a deal that was good enough that he decided, I want to test the free agent market. Here's the thing that's kind of interesting because part of the, you know, part of the thing that the 49ers are probably looking at too is he has had some injuries and in being 30 years old now, you start looking and saying, is this guy going to break down? But here's where it gets to be interesting, is in the games, and one of the games in particular, where he did not play, without Eric Armstead, who is, you know, you'll look at the numbers and see five sacks and 27 tackles and say, oh man, that ain't shit. Here's the thing, when you have a great defensive tackle, they clog up the middle, because the defenses are actually made for the linebackers to make the tackles. Your job is to occupy space. 
and to put pressure, to push the pocket, not allow the quarterback to step up. And you will get a few tackles here and there. But mainly, if you can occupy that space, teams won't be able to run on you. When Eric Armstead didn't play against the Cardinals, they gave up 240 yards on the ground. A la, that is the Dallas Cowboys defense. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Literally, that's exactly what they are without them. And that's the problem that we have. You need defensive tackles that can occupy the space. And we have not really had great ones. Hankins played good last year, but Hankins is getting old. And you still need a second one to occupy the space, and that's something that Mike Zimmer definitely wants to have. So with the Denver Broncos, they are basically hitting the reset button. They are literally saying, I don't want, Sean Payton, I I don't want the guys that were here before. It's time for us to do something different than what we've been doing. And I want to get as many draft picks. I want to clear up as much cap space. And we're basically going to take this as a redshirt year. You may even look at a team like Buffalo that is kind of doing the same thing. Because they built and everything else, they had the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. They just fell short. And now they're kind of hitting the reset button. They're going younger. They're getting rid of all the big salaries or restructuring them like Von Miller's and stuff. And you may see teams like this, opportunities that maybe you can make a trade with if you are willing to trade. So there is opportunity. There are players out there. And the Cowboys, they have opportunities to upgrade some positions if they want to. The question will be is, do they want to? Or are they going to look at it like, "Mm, meh, not really. And what I will say is, is this. If you like what Denver is doing, and you see that Denver is going to be eating that $39 million um, the next two years, you see them basically jettisoning contracts and starting all over, that's a window into if you do not do Dak Prescott's contract. If you do not do Dak Prescott's contract over, we will be the Denver Broncos next year because you will have that $36 million that the Cowboys restructured and dumped into that section. And I don't think that the Cowboys, if, if the Cowboys don't do anything to better the team, and don't get Dak Prescott that long-term deal, I don't think they'll ever re-sign him. I, I just don't. I think that Dak might finally look at it and say, you know, they didn't show me the love before the season. They didn't do anything to help me get that Super Bowl. That maybe it's time, as my career is going to be winding down, that I want to get a chance for that, and he moves on. In which case, the Cowboys have that $36 million cap hit. And we'll have to do basically a reset as well. So be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. So there we have it as we get ready. I'm going to start live streaming at noon Eastern today during Free Agent Frenzy to just get 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 a little taste, to get a little warm up. You know, it's been the off season. It's been kind of crazy. I know we won't see the Cowboys doing anything. It's going to be the rumor mills about who's talking to who and so on and things. But we've already got a major deal that's already happened. So, let's go to the tape this morning. So Wilson, the breaking news from Shefty, will sign with the Steelers ahead of free agency. He'll sign the team friendliest deal possible. It's the minimum. One year, $1.2 million. The Broncos will pay the rest. So it is being described by many, including us, as a very low-risk move for the Steelers, which I suppose has some pretty (coughs) substantial reward. Now, Vegas isn't (coughs) impressed at ESPN Bet. The odds on the Steelers... (coughs) Winning the championship do not change. As you see up there, their chances to win the conference 
and the division improves slightly. Uh, we've been talking about it all morning long. There are so many tentacles to this, and it continues. The big fella, Chris Canty, is here on Sportsmanlike ESPN Radio Coast to Coast every morning. We borrow him whenever we can. Question number one, week one, 2024 NFL season in September. Who's the Steelers' starting quarterback? It's Russell Wilson, because if it ain't, Russ's career mortality as a starting quarterback in the NFL is done. He is relegated to backup status. If you can't go out to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and beat That's Kenny the Pickett, then it's an indictment on Russell Wilson. Let's just put this in its proper perspective, its proper context. The Pittsburgh Steelers have the fewest amount of touchdown passes over the last two years of anybody in the National Football League. Russell Wilson in 2023 had more touchdown passes than the Steelers have in the past two years. That's the level of quarterback play you're seeing in Pittsburgh. The mm -hmm. Steelers were 10-7 and seven last year. Six of their seven losses, they scored 13 points or less. Russ represents a market improvement at the quarterback spot. He's going to provide competent quarterback play. And if you're Mike Tomlin, that's all you're asking for in order to put this team in position to compete for an AFC North title. I'm told Dan Orlovsky is nodding vigorously uh, there off camera. Dan, jump in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes too much sense. And, and, and I don't want people to misconstrue what Chris or I are saying. We're not saying that you're going to get that Russell Wilson quarterback that we saw some years that many thought, okay, should he get MVP votes? I don't think that's who Russ is anymore. But we've also gone to the extreme on the opinion of Russ of like, oh, he's, you know, Russell Wilson, they got rid of him in Seattle, so he sucks. And, you know, excuse me, Sean Payton didn't want him after a year, so he's awful. That's not the case. Sean Payton just didn't want Russell Wilson more than likely that the play wasn't good enough, okay? Sean Payton wants his guy. And maybe he's not worth $40 million a year. But you mean to tell me that the guy that we watched play last year, last year, and took this team to a 5-0 and stretch when they told him, after, after they told him, hey, if you don't alter your contract, we're going to mm -hmm. fire you? And he was like, all right, I'll, I'll just lead us to a 5-0 and record. And had the same numbers, yeah. okay? The same numbers mm -hmm. as a cat that just signed for $100 million just today in Baker Mayfield. And I love Baker. And Russell Wilson didn't and have I'll Mike take Russell Wilson. And Russell there. Wilson didn't have Chris Godwin. And Russell, Russell Wilson did have Kate Otten. Okay, Russell Wilson will give the Steelers the best quarterback they've played mm -hmm. play they've had in five years. Without a doubt. That matters in Pittsburgh. So, that, that well, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say, we talked about this a little bit, but if you're building the Steelers, where else are you going to go? You were going to give up a, a pick for Justin Fields, right. Baker Mayfield's off the table. You're picking 20th, so you don't really have another opportunity. I think they were opportunistic. And again, oh, I give a ton of credit to Mike Tomlin to get Russell Wilson in a room and convince him literally to play for free this year. Like, we've never seen a situation like this. Sean Payton said, I'm going to give you $39 million not to be here. This is crazy. And Mike Tomlin has convinced him to be there. It, it was a great opportunity. And now Russell Wilson is saying, I'm going to be the 2024 Baker Mayfield. To be clear, though, let me reinterpret what you're saying or rephrase it. He was going to play for free anywhere he went, essentially, right? right? No one was going to pay him $40 million. Right. So he was going to get paid the same amount regardless of what portion of that his new team was mm -hmm. going to pay him. I think he identified this to the point that has been made here repeatedly as the place he had the best chance of winning a starting job. I think what he was hoping for was to get some 2025 guaranteed money, and that's why I thought it was going to take a while. The fact that it wasn't out there, now, yeah, I have to play for free. But, again, he could have waited until June or July, so he deserves credit as well. So I know I'm, going to, I'm sounding like a little bit like a broken record here, but the one name that I continue to say is, is well, I mean, he's just lost in all of this, remains Justin Fields, who mm -hmm. I thought would have been an infinitely more interesting option in nope. Pittsburgh. So where, where do we stand with that now? Uh, it's not a great market for Justin Fields. The Bears are not finding the level of interest that they hoped they would. And Mac Jones, who was drafted, what, five picks after Justin Fields in the 2021 draft, was just dealt for a sixth round pick. So that tells you the market for these guys is not uh, what the Bears might have hoped it would be. We were talking about them potentially getting a second rounder for Justin Fields. I think at this point that would be shocking. Um, I do think See, I, I, I believe, based on all the conversations I've had, that the Bears are going to stay put and take Caleb Williams at number one. And I believe that they will trade Justin Fields. I don't think that they're going to hold on to Justin Fields and wait for the best possible deal because I don't think that's fair to him and mm -hmm. they don't necessarily want to be unfair to him. But uh, I, I don't think they're going to get what they were hoping to get for him. And I think they're going to have to wait and see. And now that the Baker domino fell and the Russell domino fell, once the Cousins one does... I think then, then the Bears will know what their market is and they'll get something done. There is no starting gig for Justin Fields out there right now. Let's, let's just be frank about it. I think if you're Justin Fields, your mindset has to recalibrate to, to the point of, 
okay, where can I go to kind of develop and kind of and hit the restart button on my career? Or go to an organization that has a starting quarterback that has similar skill set as me, and then maybe that's my avenue to getting on the field because we know how, how, how often these quarterbacks get injured out there on the playing field. So I think right now, Justin Fields has got to be, and his representative got to be looking at the, the landscape like, okay, man, this, like, starting gig might not be out there for us right now. We just got to get to the best place that can develop, that can hopefully develop me as a, as a quarterback. Yeah, Greedy, like, now the conversation brings in teams like New England, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. maybe Denver, the Raiders. I mean, you go to that class of 2021 and those five quarterbacks that were drafted, it is oh. shockingly bad. I mean, we're talking about in three years, Trevor Lawrence is going to be the only team that still has the quarterback they drafted in three short years. So mm -hmm. who Justin Fields has is, you know, it's uh, obviously it's a jump ball right now. But let's of the put quarterback that on the screen just very quickly, Chris. But Cindy, let's put that on the screen just so the fans can get a real full sense of it. I mean, th this was the, <laughs> all of these quarterbacks were taken in the first half mm. of the first mm. round mm -hmm. of the draft. By, by this time next week, yeah. well, wow. we don't know when Justin Fields will get dealt. By the time their fourth season begins, Trevor Lawrence will be the only one on the team that drafted him. Trey Lance has the best record. <laughs> <laughs> that's remarkable. Look, that's, Trevor Lawrence that's has won a crazy. playoff game. Yes. I mean, look, he, they, look, they all came into somewhat questionable yes. situations. I, th there has never been better evidence, and Orlovsky, I'm going to come to you on this, that more young quarterbacks are ruined than developed in the NFL yeah. than that list of people. Trevor Lawrence somehow overcame the catastrophe that was Urban Meyer in year one and, and took a team to a playoffs, mm -hmm. and we'll see. <laughs> Zach Wilson was placed in a terrible situation in New York. Maybe he didn't make the best of it, but it was just terrible. Mac Jones looked like he, wa he was exactly what we thought he was going to be, right? He was high floor, maybe limited ceiling, looked good as a rookie, made the playoffs, and then Bill Belichick, for reasons known only to him, decided to give him a defensive coach and a special yeah. teams coach as his offensive coaches, and mm -hmm. it, maybe his career never recovers from that. Two years later, he's getting traded for a sixth-round pick. The Trey Lance situation is weird. The Justin Field situation is what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dan, people will say, oh, look how awful that quarterback draft was. The teams had a lot more to do with that than the players themselves did. Yeah, in many ways, it makes what Joe Burrow has accomplished. It makes what C.J. Stroud and mm -hmm. what he did accomplished. Credit to them. It's it's more even even more impressive what they've done and how their teams kind of helped them. Uh, um, he, he, okay, so a couple stuff on Justin Fields, Greeny. Number one, it'll be fascinating to see if Kirk Cousins doesn't go to Atlanta. What does Atlanta do then? I still think Justin is in play then for yeah. potentially Atlanta. Okay. Uh, the second thing is this in in relation to. What what Woody said when he said there's no starting gig out there. I'm shocked that it doesn't even feel that there's a starting competition gig out there for a guy that facts over feelings Monday. <laughs> facts over feelings. Numbers wise is comparable to the dude who just won MVP. You know, like, no, we can have the opinion of Justin Fields all we want, and you can think he stinks, you can think he's the best, but the numbers are what the numbers are. And, and that's that's in a situation that maybe wasn't the Better best team. one. So it, that's shocking to me that it feels that way. I have two questions for Graziano. One, Graz, do you have any idea what they were hoping to potentially get Chicago in a trade? Maybe They're a hoping month for ago? one. And then as much as you can share with us, a third. what do you think they realistically think they're going to get right now yeah I think they were hoping for that second rounder I don't think they ever thought they were going to get a first rounder for him but I think second rounder was something they were hoping for and at this point no I, I don't and I think you know to your point you're making well, let's see what happens with Cousins because maybe one of the teams that doesn't get him likes Fields as a backup option and maybe uh, one of the teams that doesn't get Cousins doesn't right so uh, I, I think if Atlanta doesn't get him for example the, their next option is to try and trade up in the draft get one of those young guys but yeah. if that doesn't work out then maybe and here's where this kind of is interesting because the solutions I always hear about the Cowboys they just need to go out and draft the first round quarterback well they've got actually the best quarterback uh record wise who's at 500 on the roster right now and when you look at those numbers and you look at all of those guys that wow <sighs> excuse me Wow, <clears throat> that only Trevor Lawrence, <clears throat> who has a 20-30 and 30 record, <clears throat> is still with the same team. It's kind of cray-cray, y'all. And it's about to get cray-cray because we have 
free agent frenzy coming up. I'm Mark Holmes, and it's going to be a fun day. Got some extra work to do over here, uh, setting up some stuff. I brought some stuff back from my man cave. I got Micah over here. I got my man Dak Prescott. And I got C.D. Lamb, the Dallas Cowboys stars of the current time here. And, of course, I got my rock glasses here in case the Cowboys end up making a big signing or something that we'll bust that sucker right up. We'll bust it open and have ourselves a drink because we finally did something. What do you think? Will the Cowboys make a move in free agency this first week that is not a player on the roster? Don't know, but we'll find out. Hope you have a great day, good people, and...